hey guys and welcome back to another video and i hope you are all okay on that side of the screen now when i say video this will be actually a video series as usual on the channel at least regarding this type of device which is a nash unit now this is the western digital mycloud ex4100 which is one of the latest devices or nash available at least at the time of the recording of this video now on this first video i'm going to share with you a closer look at the device itself we're going to take a quick look on the dashboard to see how easy it is to use one of these nash and then we will also take a quick look on the wd2 go app on the desktop and on mobile to see some advantages and on the end of this video i will share with you the roadmap of the tests that i will be making with this device and i will give you some more feedback in just a few minutes so hope you enjoy the video and i'll see you soon So here we are with the WD MyCloud EX4100, which is the latest NASH available from Western Digital. And this particular model comes with a dual core CPU clocked at 1.6 gigahertz and 2 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. And now as usual, let's go for our very quick unboxing as usual. And as you can see on screen, there we go, unboxing done. And as you can see on screen, the device comes very well protected, which will avoid any damage while in transit. And now let's remove the accessories package, which we will cover in just a few seconds. We will also find a quick installation guide, which in my personal opinion, you won't be needing it because it's very easy to configure and to use. And lastly, we will remove the most important part of this packaging, which is the NASH itself, the EX4100. And once we remove the protection of the device, here we are with the NASH itself, as you can see on screen, very nice and shiny. And of course, in my opinion, looks awesome. But let's move on. And now let's take a quick look at the accessories that are included with this NASH. So we will have a power adapter which also comes with two sockets one for european union in general which will be the one that i'll be using in portugal and the other one for the uk but if you live somewhere else in the world just order the right version for you or get a socket adapter also included a ethernet cable and finally the warranty documentation now let's focus our attention on the mycloud ex4100 once again and this particular model that i have here with me it's a model with a total of 16 terabytes storage four times four terabytes as you can see on the screen of WD red hard drives but there are other configurations available that goes from diskless unit without any drives up to 24 terabytes of storage this of course depending on your needs and while I was talking you had the chance to see how easy it is to replace a hard drive on this NAS unit so just pull the handle remove the drive put the drive and push that handle back again now, looking at the front of the unit, we will find a power button, a USB 3.0 with a direct copy button, a LCD display with two buttons to browse the display, which we will cover in a few seconds, and four bays for the hard drives. On the left-hand side, we will find those vents that will improve the cooling of this system. While at the back, we will find a 120mm fan, which is very silent, two power connectors, two gigabyte ports, two USB 3.0 ports, and one reset button. And finally, at the bottom, we will find those four nice rubber feet, which will improve to reduce any vibration caused by the hard drives while they're spinning. And now it's time to turn on the MyCloud. And for that, just press the power button and the device will make a series of quick tests to the hard drive to see if everything is okay with those hard drives. And if they are, we are now ready to start using it. But even before we do, let's take a quick look at the message on the LCD, which at the moment is the standby mode, which means one thing, dead silence, no noise at all, which is very important for me. And that's why I wanted to focus here, although there's a particular video just with the noise test. Now, this happened on the past with the MyCloud, with the EX2 and now with the EX4100. And although the standby mode is one of my favorite messages, there are others available that we can check with those menu buttons, like the available capacity of the hard drives, the drives, status, the fan speed, firmware version and temperatures, the IP address, and also the name that you choose to give to this device. 
Okay guys, so now that we have the WDEX4100 set up, here we are on the screen. And before we start, I would like to say that I've been playing around for about two days now on this Nash and we are connected on my Windows machine, but the test that I made also on the Mac and I'll post here on the screen so you can see uh, it works exactly or very similar to the Windows machine. The speeds are the same. The uh, workflow is the same, especially when we are using the dashboard. But regarding the mounting of the drives, which is the way that I that I do uh, work, it's exactly the same. So, having that in mind, let's start this uh, screen over here. So you see that I already mounted um, DX4100 here, and of course you can access without uh, mounting it in. Just go to your network, and you will find it here with all the. Uh, folders. In my case, I do prefer to uh, have it mounted as I have my EX2 uh, and my My Book Live over here. So now let's go to our uh, dashboard and let's log in over here. I will also log in on my EX2 so we can make and this one here. It's compare. So just a comparison here. This is my book live, one of the oldest Nash that I have available here, still working for about five or six years now. But uh, just to show you that in terms of aspect, we had a really great uh, improvement um, to this generation, the MyCloud EX2, which you can uh, find on my channel as well, the full uh, review. Well, a mini series with five or six videos about this and what I can see now, if we go to the X4100, is that the interface is a bit snappier and cleaner. So my first impression is really great on this um, over here. And of course, we are not going to cover everything on the dashboard. I will make a video just for that. I will try and cover a few things here. And one of them will be the shares which is something that I I didn't even test it. I wanted to test live while recording because um, <laughs> this way I can see at the same time as you. And this, what I mean is that I want to remove a public folder and any other folder that I don't feel the need to use. And so let's try that. And for that, let's go to the minus sign here. Deleting this share will delete all content and configuration. Yeah, okay. The lighting is forbidden. So, okay. Once again, uh, we cannot remove the folders created by the system. I was hoping that this one here would give me the freedom to remove them, but no, it doesn't. So, what I would wanted to achieve was to have this all clean up with only my shares. And hopefully, WD in the future will allow us to remove this public folder and all the ones that we don't uh, we don't want but hey still not here probably in an update this was one thing that I was expecting but probably there's a reason that I don't know why they don't allow us to um, remove the uh, public folder now regarding the uh, speed test I will also make a video but let's give you a preview so the the configuration at the moment is uh, rate 5 and using disk uh, black magic disk uh, speed test let's do a quick speed so on the right this is what we can expect on rate 5 once again uh, i will make a video just for speed tests and i will try all the rate configurations so we can see the difference if there is difference or not so we are talking about 100 and 10 roughly megabits per second on the right and 106 10 on the reads which is really great now i was getting on the ex2 roughly 60 to 70 megabits per second on and, and on this version uh, the ex4100 we are getting above 100 megabits per second which is really great now putting this aside because there will be a video just for that uh, one thing that i would like to mention here as well and before I do, let's just take a very quick look on the dashboard, just a teaser for the uh, next video. So we have the home folder with all this information and users, which we can uh, add as we want. The shares, which will be the thing that we will be adding here, the thing, the folders, sorry about that. Uh, cloud access, which we will cover on this video. 
and then the backups there will be just a video for backups storage where we will configure our raid settings and some apps that we can install and we will try that on the dashboard video as well and then some settings as usual um, and that is it so keep in mind that i will be doing a video just for this so if you are interested in that just stay tuned to the channel and in a few days i will have that um, done now let's go to the app and i've got here let me minimize this dashboard once again just my feeling of the dashboard is um that it's very snappy um and very user friendly as always uh, even on the ex2 was very user friendly and it has a great thing which is the firmware updates uh, which are all online well even on the first um, generation my book life it was uh, like that so but a great improvement over the years uh, with this now let's go without wasting much of your time already with six minutes just on a screen so here we are with the uh, cloud access um, so this will be very useful uh, if you are outside your network if you are on your network just uh, access like this it's pretty easy um, but if you are outside of your network then the best way is to use uh, the my cloud app or you can use ftp as well with a filezilla for example uh, app now what i want to tell you before we mess around with this is that i also tried the app on the mac and on the iphone but on the mac i will post here on the screen that uh, so you can see that it works uh, similarly to the Windows platform so you will have all the options that we will see over here and I will show you in a few moments as well the uh, phone app so what we can do over here is if you are let's say traveling or outside your network um, in a different office whatever uh, you can access all your files that are on your NASH so in this case let's make a example here um, if I want to, let's say I need a photo and I want to drag it to, oops, I want to drag it to my desktop. Here we go. So I've got a photo on my desktop and I can work with that uh, photo. Or if I want to show the photo to someone and I don't need it on the desktop, just open it up. And the video, I will test it on the iPhone. So let's not test it here. Um, one more thing is, let's say that you have a document on your office, on your NASH in this case, and you are somewhere else in the world and you need to edit, just open it up. And I already did, did the testing here, but let's do testing one video. I'll say English because I will make a video in Portuguese as well next. So if I save this document right now, it will save directly to the NASH and once I open it up again when I'm home or when I'm somewhere else there it is so you don't need to carry around your device or your storage you will have everything on your office all you need is just your laptop or uh, phone or whatever you use to uh, work and of course if you want to if you prefer to work on your uh, desk just copy the document and once you update it you can then upload it so this is the big advantage uh, of having this app uh, especially outside your network once again and now let's move to the mobile app and in here i'm going to try and mirror my phone to my machine and there we go let's minimize this one and let's press the my cloud app and if I go here, as you can see, I've got uh, three drives connected, uh, my my cloud to uh, my cloud uh, or my book life. Sorry, it was called that back then the EX2 and then the EX4100 and selecting the 4100, which is the point of this video. I can just go and browse my folders. And as you can see, I can see the pictures let me rotate it here so we can see it better and I can even zoom in okay 
and I can do the same with a video for example so let me rotate the phone I have the volume down Okay, so in my opinion, works great um, as it did on the EX2. This is not anything new, uh, but I would like to point out that it's working great on the EX4100. Um, one more thing that I would like to mention here, and this I will post on screen, is that on the phone itself, I do get uh, the pixel uh, density or the way that I see with my eyes much better than what you are seeing here. Um, on the desktop because on the desktop everything is stretched um, so the resolution is uh, not the best and let's close this okay so having this in mind guys let's log in again uh, this will be it for this video. Don't forget I will be doing a series and I will talk about that in the conclusion that I will be <laughs> talking next. But hopefully you enjoyed this first approach to the EX4000 and I will see you in a few seconds. And that is it. So I hope you have enjoyed this first video and let me share with you just a few things and one of them is so far the experience that I've had with DX4100 has been great now as you know I'm building my list and taking some notes that will be covered in the future videos and by talking on the future videos let me tell you by now that this is the first video the unboxing and etc that you already saw the second video will be a full dashboard interface review the third will be about backups fourth will test the speed tests and the noise tests if there are any and lastly I'm gonna share with you the pros and the cons or the things that I did like most and the things that I did like less as I always do on my videos and finally if the device is worth it or not now a spoiler alert so far I'm really happy with its performance and overall uh, capability so that is it guys for this particular video that is it hope that you stay tuned to the channel and are interested to see the follow-up videos about the EX4100 my name is Alberto George and I'll see you on the next one